Hey guys, so I'm gonna talk about sports cards and Pokemon cards. So if you've ever gone to any of these conventions, and there's plenty of conventions, you will know cast is king. Especially now that eBay, uh, Venmo, Apple Pay, any one of these third parties, which previously would not report how much money a transaction was, the amount is now capped at 600 total. So it could be 10 transactions for $60 total, and then the PayPal or the, you would be reported. The way the reporting works is, for instance, my business, we do a lot of credit cards and we pay a merchant fee. So the credit card company obviously knows how much money we charge. Now the payment processor, it could be a Visa card, it could be a Discover, it doesn't matter. We use one payment processor and that payment processor reports to the government and also sends us a piece of paper, just like your employer would saying, hey, you know, we reported this to the government, check it over, let us know if there are any problems. Now, if there's no problems with it, that number has to match up. Now, your number could be more. You could have made more revenue, which meant people came in, gave you cash for these toys. People came in and gave you other forms of payment like PayPal, which the merchant account wouldn't be reporting. It would only report the credit card charges. And that's fine. Maybe you had some online sales and you have a different processing system. Maybe you use Stripe online. But the number cannot be lower than the payment processor reported, right? Because that there's no way. It's it's a payment processor which does most of my our credit cards plus PayPal plus Stripe. And then that gives us our total revenue, which then we report, report to the government after expenses and so on. I would go ahead and predict a lot of these backpack flippers who've been making all this money, they probably don't even have EIN numbers. They probably don't have, uh, right now, like I have two businesses. They're both uh, limited liability companies, LLCs. My guess is they don't even have real companies, right? So how are they doing business? How are they getting taxed? How are they paying for all this? I don't know. Like every convention log you see, they the person says, oh, can you take Venmo? Can you take Apple? And they're, no, I, I want cash. I wonder why that person wants to have cash. Is it because they don't want to report it for tax reasons? And the answer is yes. But when you have every, if you, you got cameras all over the place, is it really that smart to evade your taxes when you have cameras pointing every deal and the vlogger themselves are making a big, so it's not only the vlogger who's in danger, it's also the, the person they're so selling, mainly that they are buying the card from, right? So if you're a vendor, you're not used to having cameras pointed at you. Pre-COVID, this wasn't a thing. Vlogging at conventions was not something that many people did. And now you're selling cards and you're having a good time, you're chatting with the guy. That that receipt, and I'll talk about receipts. No one in this effing industry gives you a receipt at the convention. I've been to these conventions before. I bought cards and I've asked, hey, can I get a receipt? And they're like, oh, we don't offer receipts. I've been to Collector Con. I bought uh, a few boost uh, ETBs, right? So just to open for fun. They don't even have a receipt for an ETB, which is ludicrous. I'm not even talking about single cards. Of course, they don't have receipts for that. And they want everything to be in cash. Well, typically companies that deal with cash, obviously money laundering, everyone who watched Ozark and Netflix and understands how that goes, right? This is like the perfect money laundering front because all the deals are done in cash. Like today, very few of my deals are done in cash. When we sell in our store, I cannot remember the last time we, some, we pay people out in cash because that's what they prefer but I cannot remember the last time that we sold anything in cash. We typically do not unless it's like, I don't know, it would have to be like a small amount. We wouldn't do a, we wouldn't do anything insane. We would ask, hey, we can wire the money, we're at the chase, or, or in, in the case that if we're buying a big collection, we'll meet at the chase, I'll take the cash out, if that's what you want, and we'll put the cash right into your chase. And that the only way that would work is if you also had a Chase account. 
So that's the only way I can see a lot of cash being taken out from my end and given to you at the bank which you're depositing. Because having that much cash is very dangerous. I, I don't know like if people realize that your cards are incredibly liquid and incredibly valuable. And many of them, even the graded ones, I know, yes, if it gets stolen, the serial number, it's just hard to track all of that stuff. So back to the receipt, if you go to any of these conventions, like for instance, you go to the mall, 10 out of 10 places, including the food court, including a movie theater, including you buy, you buy a popcorn, they're gonna give you a receipt with the exact item, the large, small, medium popcorn that you bought with the price and the tax and so on. That's how real business is. That's how I do it. I have a point of sale system. And when we sell something, it, it actually, it, it's the same system that GameStop uses, I think. Uh, and it will tell you, hey, you, you have this much left or you should have this much left. And if you don't have that much left, let's say it tells me, oh, I should have five booster boxes of magic left of this new set. And I owe me at four. Well, I know an employee probably stole one. <laughs> you know, this is a good check. Your point in the sales system was always going to tell you what you bought it for, what you what you sold it for, the profit, and also even your taxes. Like it doesn't automatically report it to the government, but you can print out the quarterly report and send it. So I think it's pretty fascinating that a lot of this business in the sports car industry, there's not even like a receipt. So again, you go to a mall, you buy anything in the mall, you buy like a $1 comic book, they give you a receipt. Then you go to a convention and there's not even the machine, nobody even has a machine to give you a receipt. So unless it's a digital receipt, which a cash transaction obviously is trying to avoid, right? Why ask for cash when the whole point is to avoid the digital transact, I mean, avoid the history of the transaction, right? So anyway, it, it's very fascinating, uh, something to think about. I, I don't know how many of these companies are LLCs. I don't know how many of them have EIN numbers, tax ID numbers even, beyond their own social security numbers. I don't know all that stuff, but I do know like something like Mark's Cards, who made millions of dollars, they didn't pay any a single dime in taxes, maybe employee taxes, I don't even know. Maybe they're back taxed on it because they owed so much money. Typically people, when they owe a lot of money, are not gonna pay the back taxes. They're gonna pay their employees to get them to keep and continue work. But my point is like you have a Mark's Cards that bankrupt right before tax season, right right before that April tax deadline. <laughs> And I, it's it's pretty disgusting, right? You have all these PPP loans. I actually was watching Common Hype today and the, the store owner in Vegas, when they asked him like why his business was booming, it was like, oh, PPP loans for sure. <laughs> but all that money has gone. I mean, yes, it was free money for US citizens with businesses to abuse and do whatever they wanted with, right? And there seems to be very little consequence for taking that free money as of now. But understand, the IRS can come after you 10 years later for that money. So it's kind of like this sword over your head. If you did something wrong, just because you got away with it this year does not mean they won't come after you next year. And, and if you have any other issues, they, come, they bring all the issues on the table at one time. Not having receipts is troublesome. So when I do business, I would like a receipt because I need to put, especially when I'm buying cards, I need to put it in my point of sale system. And a ideal receipt would be a buy list, which is, you know, an emailed. So I'm not saying a receipt has to be like a physical receipt. I'm not a dinosaur, right? I'm saying a receipt could be a digital receipt. But when you force the transaction to be in cash for a slightly discounted price, that worries me because I don't, everyone in their grandmother trust me if they if, if you understand what people are doing the irs definitely understands what people are doing in these vlogs why do you want fifteen thousand dollars in cash i wonder why anyway hi guys